Hey and welcome, Miss Kira Speaks. Please do me a huge favor and stick around till the end of the video. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. We're here for another episode of Snowfall, season six, episode seven, Charnel House. So now in this episode, we're not gonna get a lot of action. We're gonna get a lot of dialogue and a lot of setup for the few episodes that are left in this season. And what we're starting with is a direct result of what happened last episode and they lead us right back into it because basically we're almost where we left off. So we see Franklin and he takes Unc. Unc is going to a funeral home and being taken care of because basically it was some street shit. So we're not going to the hospital. He's already gone. So now we're just trying to make the preparations to get him buried. Of course, Lou is there. She's inconsolable. She's a faithful of tears, especially when they tell her that they're going to need a day or two with the body because she doesn't want to be separated from her husband, even though he's already gone. So Leon, he takes her home and he offers to, you know, stay with her, whether it's inside, outside. I can't remember what he said, but basically just to sit with her because it's a lot. And Louis basically like, you know, she's good. The, you know, the war is over, but is the war really ever over? So as she gets inside, it is a reminder that these two are just freshly off getting married last season. We see their wedding picture and their wedding gifts. There's wedding gifts all over the place and she's just not doing so good. She looks bad. You see the burn marks on her face. You see the brand of the K on her chest. And you know, she's like looking in the mirror, she's crying. It's a whole lot. I just realized that that Connect Four is in the background because they didn't clean it up, but we just gonna go ahead and ignore that. So Teddy, he has a quick meeting with Habermeyer just to get up to date with the goings ons of everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we see that he's at the rental and, re you know, Paris is cracking jokes at how things were set up, but it's not his house. Like he says, it's a rental. So these two can barely get a word of conversation. We, when we get a knock at the door and it's Julia, um, Teddy's ex. And she comes in and she's like, when did you two get back together? And she asked for the room, but Teddy's basically telling her, listen, she knows everything. So you could just go on and say what you got to say. So she's asking him like, you know, what's going on? Like we had to move. What happened with your dad? And he's like, she's like, why did your, I think she said mule. Why did your mule kill your dad? And she's like, um, Teddy's like, he thinks I stole his money. She's like, and did you? Yes, he did girl. He stole Franklin's money. So like I said, he did steal Franklin's money. We know that he's telling her that. And I forgot to mention that when she shows up, she's also pregnant. So she's basically telling him like, just go ahead and give Mac the money. And he's like, he can't, it's more trouble. Is it really though, Teddy? Or is this just like a thing with you and Franklin, which is my perspective, but she knows Teddy and she knows Teddy is just going to double down on the whole situation and say, He's fighting for the country and she's basically not like not at the a-holes out of the way, meaning Teddy's dad, like that's the only person that he was trying to impress and that this man never gave her anything but her child and now he is putting her child's life in danger. So she tells him, give the money back or I'll fix it for myself. And of course he wants to know how. And she says with his public execution, and I kind of wonder what that meant. And at this point I'm saying, is it possible that Franklin might see this money? I, I don't know. So later on, Parissa is basically kind of having the same conversation with him because she says she ain't really fooled with home girl. And she thought that she was uptight, but maybe she's right. She's like, you know, maybe, she has a point and Teddy's like, no, we're fine. We're protected. He says something about the money being theirs. And she's like, no, the money belongs to you. And basically it's kind of like almost pay her for her pain because she wants a purpose. Cause all he has her basically doing with her life is just sitting around and hiding. But anywho, so Franklin, he goes on over to the PJs and immediately when he gets there, Wanda is worried about Leon. Sissy asks if he's with Louie and he says yes. And Jerome, <sighs> poor Sissy. And so we basically see what the answer to that is as he takes Sissy over to the funeral home to see um, Unk's body. And she's like, did he suffer? And he's like, no. And 
he kind of goes to touch her and she kind of pulls away because sissy is upset sissy's upset this is her brother her husband's gone and it's just a lot and we can fully understand where she's coming from at this moment with that sissy goes on over to visit you know to pay louis a visit and she's telling louis that jerome really loved her Louis says that she doesn't know what she's gonna do without him. And Sissy's basically like, basically saying to her that, listen, all of this has to stop. Louis, she's like, all of this is Franklin's fault. So Sissy's like, listen, you're right. He did do his share, but we all played a part in this and that no one's gonna leave out of the situation with clean hands. And we know Sissy's right. So Louis basically like, listen, I lost my husband. And, and Sissy's like, yeah, I lost him too. Like that's my brother also. And I also lost my husband. But Louis, she's in the space that she's like, you know, you still have something that you care about and I don't. Meaning Sissy still has Franklin and Louis doesn't have anybody. But at this point, does Sissy really have Franklin? Because the Franklin that we know and love from season one is long gone. So a little bit later, we see Louis having a wicked nightmare. She's going over like how she was tortured and how Unk was taken out. And it's just a lot. She wakes up, she's crying, she's hysterical. She's walking around the house. She's breaking up stuff. She was looking for something. I don't know exactly what she was looking for. I thought maybe she was looking for some type of product you can correct me if i'm wrong down in the comments so she gets in the car she's looking a mess she's hysterical crying you know beating the steering wheel like i think her name is angela lewis just giving us top tier acting so she drives up to somewhere and at first i didn't know where it is and she's basically crashing the car because like i said she her head her head space is not there and she's at scully's place basically screaming and yelling like you know how unk was in that episode with franklin because with him going, she's she's ready to go herself, but I think Scully kind of, they, they finally kind of let her to Scully's door and of course he lets her in. So like I said, he lets her in and he's very gentle. He takes like, you know, some peroxide or whatever. He's kind of trying to clean her up and he's asking her what's wrong. And she's asking him how he found peace after what happened to his family, you know, his baby girl and his lady. and he basically says that they're not gone. And she's like, you know, don't you, doesn't it make you want to, you know, make you angry, make you want to burn the whole place down? And he's like, hell yeah, but they won't let him. And he doesn't want to taint, you know, the memory that he has of them or taint their love or something to that, he said. And I was kind of glad that Louis did end up going to see Scully because I was afraid, like I said, she was going to somewhere to find drugs. And while it was good that she went to him for that comfort, I was kind of like, mm, because I didn't know, like, if this is going to put Scully in a bad place, are you going to trigger him and send him back to a point where he's going to be looking for revenge again? I don't know, kind of, it was 50-50 for me. So we see Franklin and he's with Leon and he asks Leon for half a mil and he asks him what it's for and he says it's freedom. So I'm assuming that this is money that he's gonna get to give to Gustavo. And he's, you know, he tells him he doesn't know when he's gonna be able to give it back, but Leon's his boy, so he's not really so much worried about it. So then they start to talk about Unc and Franklin basically says something to, what did he say? Franklin says he never should have broke away and none of this would have happened and I was like this is why I'm saying like Franklin is not the dude that we knew no more he's you know kind of a heartless and effed up individual and you have to think that this had Leon's wheels turning because if you feel that way about your own uncle which it was clear when they took Unc out and how Frank was Franklin was crying and he was moved like that's your uncle so you did care about him but if you can say that and be this heartless about him like I know Leon had to be thinking like, where does this leave me? And honestly, this whole episode, Franklin is like a dog with a bone because he wants Teddy and he wants his money and it's not getting him any place good. And later on, we see that he's having some terrible nightmare. I don't even know if they showed us exactly what was in his nightmare, but he damn near was like falling out the bed because I think they're staying at the trap house on like a mattress and V had to wake him up, but he was so like, panicked and frantic and like he just he couldn't pull himself together he says he's not fine and she looks worried and i was like uh-oh because i 
this was one of those moments that I'm like, I'm surprised she stayed this long, but right now was really uh, for V, I'm looking at the front door. That's the vibes it gave me because if this man is, you know what I'm trying to say, like if he's telling you he's not fine, like it's not all good. So Gustavo's in his place with his lady. When they hear a noise, she sends him to go see what it is. And who is it? It's Ruben sitting in his place in the kitchen. <sighs> like he was, he's pulling a whole teddy on Ruben. So he tells Ruben, no, Ruben tells Gustavo that, excuse me, I hope y'all didn't hear that. He wants him to receive the shipment that's, he wants them to receive the shipment that's coming in two days and hide it so that they can basically catch catch Teddy. So Gustavo was telling him like, all right, I'll help you. But he's telling him, you know, he needs to get away. Kind of the same thing. He told Franklin, he needs passports, he needs the money, the setup or whatever. And while they're going through all of this, his lady, I think her name is Zia Maro because I never have this poor lady's name. She walks in while they're talking. So Ruben's telling him that they can place them anywhere and give them enough to start a new life and when he's leaving he's like but you know this is not negotiable it's not a request i forgot what he says so you know basically it's a threat but i'm sitting here saying to myself do you have the power to put him wherever you wherever he needs to go and give them money i don't know so now he leaves ziamaro is worried and she's like she's had enough and that maybe her and the kids should go and that he should know where they're going to and he kind of agrees. Poor Gustavo is at his wits end and he tries to like stay 10 toes down, but this whole situation is really putting him in a bad place. So Wanda comes in and she has some stuff for her new place and Leon is like, are you leaving me? And she says, no, but I'm not living in the projects anymore. And I said, come on Wanda, that's right, wife, put your foot down. And she says to him, in a perfect world, they would pack their things today and get on a plane and go back to Ghana. But Wanda, she already knows what's up. And Leon, he's getting ready for war. And war with who? Is this a Dion war? Because the whole saint versus saint thing is kind of over. But I'm assuming he means Dion because we know Dion's coming back. Wanda, she doesn't want the same fate fate as uncle jerome and leon is very much sounding how louis did in the last episode like i just need to do this one more thing and then and so we know how that turned out for jerome and i really 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 don't want it to turn out that way for leon so later on we see wanda goes over to sissy's old place to get the rest of her things and you know her sissy her and sissy talk about wanda leaving and sissy offers wanda to stay in one of the places that they own and she also offers, offers Wanda her position full-time at the shelter. So Sissy has checked out, she's ready to go. And this is no good. And Wanda's asking Sissy what she's gonna do. And we, I don't think we ever really got an answer. And I don't know, put down in the comments what you think is gonna happen to Sissy. Sissy was never looking to go to Ghana. So is she gonna go back to Cuba? Like, is Sissy gonna end up in jail? The whole sissy thing has me a little confused. So at first I was a little confused, but I'm thinking we are still at Louie's place and Candy, cause I said, is it her sister? And then I realized it was Candy who was her home girl that she was setting up in Little Rock, Arkansas. I don't know if that was season five or season four. I think it was season five. She's come to visit her and you know, basically Louie's in the tub and she's helped bathing her, bathe her. And they're reminiscing about their childhood and their upbringing and I think did she say Louis was 12? I can't remember how old Louis was, but basically like there was a guy that was offering $20 to like choke you till you passed out. And Louis, she was up for the offer. And she says to this day, now she has a whistle in her throat. And then she recounts another situation of being locked down in the basement with somebody that sounded like he was a chest of the finished the rest of that sentence and basically how she ended up back right back to where she started and we knew that Louie had a lot of trauma because Unc was talking to her about how she's effed up and so now we're getting you know some of uh, just a small glimpse into Louie's backstory and you know when they start talking that backstory a lot of times that means for these characters that they're on their way out close to being gone and she's talking about losing Jerome and it you know being her fault which it was and a friend, you know, she's saying whatever, and she gets a page from Teddy. Now, when she calls Teddy back, 
She's very tight and she's got that very, very rah, rah, white man, what do you want type of energy? And he's like, uh, don't forget you still work for me. He wants to meet right now. And she's like, I'll meet you at three at wherever. And she just basically hangs up the phone on him. She wants to do things on her own terms, so to speak. But in any event, she still goes and takes her ass to that meeting with Teddy. He sees her face and asks what happened. And I think she says it was like a business dispute or something like that. He tells her about what happened to his dad and he says that he wants Franklin. Louis like, we don't socialize. And then basically she's, t basically she's telling him that she has to bury her husband tomorrow and that basically it's all Franklin's fault. Teddy had no idea that Unc was gone and this probably put him in a position to wonder what, what, what it was gonna, you know, how he was gonna turn up if Franklin took his uncle out. I don't know if that's what he was thinking, even though he didn't. But Louis basically says, you know, after the funeral, she's all in for whatever it is that he wants to do with Franklin, but basically leave her alone until then. So Franklin, he goes over and he meets with Gustavo and Gustavo says he's leaving tomorrow. Well, Franklin has the money, but he doesn't have the documents because he says the documents, you know, they take what they take. He's pissed off. So we kind of get into like, you know, what happened and Gustavo was in a bond, y'all, which we already knew. So then he finally reveals to Franklin that the DEA busted him, took his money and forced him to help. And so frankly, you know, he pulls out the strap on him because he's like, you know, he wants to know what did he tell him? He, he's trying to figure out if he's exposed. But he tells Franklin that they want Teddy too, as Franklin is darn near about to blow his head off. But he tells him you're clean that you know he didn't say anything and he also tells him about the kgb and how they broke into his house and that they want teddy too so you got the kgb and we got the D I dea so everybody wants teddy and you can see franklin's wheels are turning so he tells gustavo like let's buy you another day you know let's buy you another day with the dea but he needs teddy asap but gustavo's like i have not seen him since you pulled that you know that stunt with his father so also is apologizing and franklin he um he wants teddy he wants teddy bad but they they already know that teddy is not going to be full so franklin like i said the wheels are turning and he says that he has to make teddy think that teddy set him up and basically that that's the only way that it's going to work smart plan franklin have a matter he's meeting with somebody in the uh in the cia and he's telling them what's going on with teddy and teddy's dad and you know the kgb etc like it's just a basic it's basically a mess so as they're talking it over the boss is telling him that he has cracks to fill and that to me says that it's not looking so good for teddy because if franklin don't get teddy the CIA is not about to let Teddy leave them exposed yet again. And you already heard what Julia said earlier in the episode. And the streets was wondering, not me, because I don't think this is the case, that maybe Parissa might take out Julia for Teddy. But I don't think that's going to happen. You can put that in the comments and let me know whether you agree or not. So now we're at the end of the episode and it's time for Unk's home going. And I put black on for your boy Jerome, but in light of what just happened with my friend and it really really hit me in a place that um i don't know if i've ever felt in my life i couldn't do what i normally do and kind of let you know laugh it off play it off put on a real life funeral outfit so but you got the black because it's r.i.p unk so everybody's there we see gustavo wanda she's again having this conversation about leon about how much of a stand-up guy unk was and that she doesn't want the same thing to happen to him and leon he just you know he's almost got the the mind frame of a kid that he doesn't think everything anything's going to happen to her, happen to him he's calling her you know mrs simmons and he's like i'm right here with you and yeah you're right there now but she's not necessarily worried about that moment she wants you to make it out okay but i digress Buckley he shows up too and Louis point blank asks him a question about unpaging him and he lies to her face and I was like if I was her I'd slap shit out of him right then and there. 
Scully walks up to Einstein. Didn't understand that scene. You could drop down in the comments and let me know what that meant to you. And what I did not want to happen happened. Dion rolls up on Leon. I don't know if he was like, nigga, or what he said, but all he basically ended up doing was asking him if they were going to take care or had they taken care of the guys that took care of Unk. And you know, Leon, he's all over it. So also we saw at the funeral, we saw um, the guy from Power that also played the Little Rock Connect. He didn't say anything and sitting behind Louie at some point was good old Uncle Clifford from P-Valley. And I had to go to the actress that plays, I think her name is, I can't remember her name. I said it earlier in the episode, but I think I was wrong. I mean, in the review uh, recap, um, the act, Angela Lewis, the actress that plays, Louis, I'm stumbling all over it. I'm not gonna edit it out. It just is what it is. It's life. She was saying on her IG that uh, Nico played her cousin in either season one or season two. And I think his name was Laurent Saint Laurent. And I was like, yeah, that's right. And it's funny because a lot of you guys have these, all of these great memories for Snowfall and you know, power a lot of these things, but like I tend to forget a lot of stuff. So that was like one of the things that I saw that I was like, oh, Glad that I, you know, she put that up there to kind of jog my memory. So Franklin, he approaches Louie and he asks her what she needs. And she's like, you know, she asked him, why did you come back for me? He says that he was raised to respect women and that he couldn't live with himself if he had left her there with Cain, which is what I was thinking. And I thought that that was good enough. And part of me in my heart of hearts knows that he also did it for Unk but Louis not was not buying it and I forgot what she asked and then he also he says that plus you made me a promise which she didn't necessarily make a promise but he says he needs all the help that he can get and she calls him the devil and he's like I know and he walks away and that is where the episode ends and I don't know if that was quite the answer that Louis was looking for or the answer that he should have gave her but honestly I don't know what else he could have said to her and Lou what he said already that would have made the situation any better because she was just angry. Like I said, maybe he could have brought up the fact that, you know, he did it on the strength of Unk, but he said what he said, but his hands ain't clean and neither are hers, but she hasn't come to that place in her head. Anyhow, how did you guys like the episode? And I don't know if I said it earlier, but I was glad that Teddy's dumb ass did not show up since he knew that there was now a funeral that was gonna be going on and, you know, shoot up the place or cause a scene thank you lord so now judging from the previews for the next episode is what franklin said gonna come back to bite him like because you don't want louis to go against him so she's got nothing to lose at this point and we see that she has franklin tied up in the next episode so now is this payback or is franklin franklin really getting what he wanted and making it seem like teddy got him do we think that Franklin is going to get his money back? And now your girl, Gail Bean, who plays, who is the, ugh. zoop, 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 zoop. Your girl, Gail Bean, who is the actress who plays Wanda, posted on IG um, that Deadline article that is picking up Snowfall as a spinoff. And she is one of the characters that are going to be in there which is great for Gail Bean, Wanda, whatever you want to say we do love her we wanted her to win we wanted to see her make it out but the timing of it all sucks if you ask me this is the only thing I cannot stand about social media at this point leave us guessing leave us up to the very last episode y'all should have dropped that after episode 10 premiered like now we know Wanda's not gonna make it like I said which was which is good because we want her to make it but I don't know just make us work for it um, I still want Leon to make it. Um, I don't know. I can't believe we are only three episodes away from, or we have three episodes left to the finale. Ow, you want to say it? I'm phrasing it wrong. I'm so hyped up. But leave your thoughts, theories, and comments down in the comments section, or please just let me know you stop by, drop an emoji, a flame. I don't care. And join your girl back here for episode eight. Peace.